Welcome to part two of the IronCAD 2009 Next Generation. This demonstration will focus on the new structure part design and highlight some of the key differences from the innovative design. In this demonstration we'll start off with two parts that are basically innovative parts and you can denote these by the scene browser and the icon that is used. How you can create innovative or structured parts is based on our part type down at the bottom right hand side of your, your screen. If you select it to innovative part when you drag and drop or create features and sketches they will create as innovative parts in the tree. If you change your selection to structure part, simple as that, you will now have a structure part in your scene. When you expand these, you'll notice a few differences between the two parts. Uh, innovative parts will basically just be a list of your features that are used to create the innovative part. Structure parts support reference objects like datum planes, data points, axes that will display as your coordinate systems and also as datums in your tree and also supports a rollback feature. Since this is a true history based model you can roll back to any point in history to see how the model is built up to that stage and, and roll back to the very end of the stage. You can also insert during these uh, rollback states. And We'll show a little bit of that during the demonstration. Let me go ahead and create or delete these two parts and what we're going to start off here is we're going to start off with a structure part and we're going to use the same functionality that you would with innovative part design. You can right click, drag and drop and refer to an existing object and drop as a part. You have the same handle technology where you can right click, refer to existing objects using the smart snap capability. We want to snap to the center of our object. We can hold the shift key to snap to edges or faces. You can pull the handles just like you could in innovative design, push and pull. And you can also you know, do things like control, grab both handles, change the value. Uh, some of these rules are the same as innovative design. However, when you get into more of the structure, when you start using sketches to define your objects, some of these rules will change slightly. And this is highlighted in the new feature document. Uh, however, you can also do things on the part level just as you would as innovative parts. At the part level, they're basically the same object. Objects, you can move these features around. You can refer to different edges with the tri ball. You can use the maiden line positioning tools. For example, we want to do a maiden line to the center point. We can simply use the tri ball to position that object. Uh, one of the new features that is supported on both innovative parts and structured parts is the ability to set a part as active. If you right click on the part, you'll see the command. When you select this option, the other parts become transparent in the scene and your main part is active. The advantage of this is that when you create features, for example, if you drag and drop into space, previously in IronCAD it would create a new part. In this mode, it always adds as a feature to that object. In structured parts, it'll add as a feature. Innovative parts will add as a feature. It uh, becomes a little bit more powerful in structure part because you can do things like surfaces and 2D shapes, 3D curves can all reside underneath the structure part, whereas in innovative parts, 2D shapes and 3D curves and surfaces don't reside underneath as feature levels. They're all parts at the top level. Uh, let's go ahead and show an example of this. We'll start with a 2D shape. And some of the new things that are 2D shape is it has some intelligence to pick your location based on where you pick in the scene. If I pick a point, it'll automatically determine that it's a point. Or if you pick a face, it'll use offset from face or plain face uh, setting here. Uh, you can turn off this automatic finish when you pick on your point. Basically, if you pick a point, it meets the conditions that'll finish the command. Or if you want to use advanced options, you can turn that off so that when you pick on a face, it'll show you what option it chose. You can change it to change the references, change whatever geometry you picked. In our case, we want to maybe want to move the origin down to the bottom right-hand corner, and we can also fix the reference or change our x, y, x, z directions inside of here. The fix to reference for structure parts means is if this face moves or this point moves, our profile will move, and all the geometry that's associated will also update correctly. So let's go ahead and create our sketch. And what we're creating here today is basically we have the base for a stapler, and we're going to create the stop the top part of our stapler. And it's got a little bit more curvature to it, so it made a little bit more sense to possibly do this in structured. So we'll use a spline to define our curvature for our top. And another nice advantage in the structured parts is the ability to refer directly to the 3D before it in the history. Notice I can apply these dimensions from our spline element directly to the 3D element, top or bottom, if I want to refer to that object. Pick any one of these points to basically drive or set relationships to our 2D shape. So we can drive this shape a little bit more. Control this 14 here. We can drive that. The advantage of this is the structure parts have an order so that if we change our block 
this 2D profile will update. Anything that's built after this in the, the history will also update accordingly, and we'll show an example of this. Let's go ahead and finish our shape. And as you see, since it's an active part, the 2D profile exists as a feature inside of our 2D inside of our structured part. Now we can use this to create things like a surface. If we want to do a sweep surface, we can use the 2D profile. We can use this edge as our reference path or our guideline. Create our surface, and again, it adds as a feature to the to the structured part, not as a new part. And this is beneficial if you want to create a complex surface. You can close, make a closed boundary, use things like blended surfaces, thing, just various surface commands, trimming objects, whatnot. And at the end, you can do an operation like a boolean operation to unite or subtract or create intersection bodies. For example, we want to subtract from our main block. We're going to subtract this surface. We'll go ahead and just pick our surface. And we can see which direction we want to keep, the upper direction or the bottom direction. And go ahead and apply that. And it cuts our object there for us. And these 2D profiles, you can also hide them. They'll stay here visible so you can refer them for other features. Or you can just hide them so that they're not in your selection path. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and add some blends to our part. We'll just pick our edges, a couple edges here to blend to some values. And maybe we want to add another feature here. We're going to add a cylinder down onto our point. So we'll just kind of zoom in a little bit. Drag and drop a feature. Or we could use a sketch. Either one would have worked in this case. We'll just give it a size and the handles. One, a new option that has been added to both innovative and structured part is on any feature, you can right click. And in addition to the edit cross section, you have a new edit feature option. What this does is it brings up the information that used to define the feature. In this case, we have a cross section that was defined. We can delete that, create a new cross section. We can change its directions. We can also change it from add to remove material, or even change it to a surface type if we wanted. In our case, we wanted to extrude up to a surface. And one of the nice things that's been added is our extrude two commands have some intelligence now. So when I pick the face, notice our shape automatically reversed its direction to give us the extrude to surface based on our pick. So it's intelligent enough to know how it needs to act to solve the selection instead of having to know what's your forward direction or your back, backwards direction. So let's go ahead and apply that shape. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a, oops, sorry, another feature here, a hole. And we're just going to drop, drop that right onto our part. And let's make that six. And we can just pull this through. It doesn't really matter at this point. We'll just pull it through our object. And let's add some blends on our part. 